Yes, sir. You're rocking with the newest radio show on Hamilton Radio, My Sports Radio. Heels and Barnes hits it high. It's a game. Radio, and here's your host, Sean. Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen. It is July 15th, Wednesday. You're listening on Hamilton Radio. Dot net simulcast on Facebook. This is my sports radio with your boy John and Tell. And the seat to my right does feel a little empty. The sexy black man James Brown is not here tonight to join me, unfortunately, but he's here in spirit. I know he did a little traveling, so I hope his travels were well, safe, and healthy. But I'll be looking to bring him back on the show to keep what we had going moving along. But you're here with me. And the sports world is in fuego right now. We have no sports, but it's still on fire. lot to cover. Guys and girls, the NBA, the players are back in the bubble. Almost all players are back in the bubble. NFL, there's big contracts being handed out left and right. There's money being thrown out everywhere. Are we even having a football season? The New York Metropolitans may have a new owner relatively soon. And it could be a rod, it could be a group led by a rod and J Lo and a few very, very, very big sports athletes, including Brian Erlacher, Travis Kelsey. Could be very interesting. What we have going on here, but guys and girls, welcome Ziva, Brad, Terry Muller, all the way from Mexico. Welcome, man. I hope your trip has is great so far. Uh, anything's got to be better than Jersey right now, right? So hopefully, uh, hopefully you're you're good over there. You're safe. You're healthy, man. So uh, it's good to see you tuning in, guys and girls. I didn't know where I want to start today, but you know what? I'm going to go football. I'm going to go football because I'm pretty jacked up for a few reasons. Football, we, we're seeing contracts. First of all, do the Kansas City Chiefs print money? Uh, is this the only NFL team that prints money? Patrick Mahomes, half a billion dollars. Just to turn around <clears throat> and sign a major, major player in Chris Jones turn around and just say, dude, honestly, we're going to give this guy a massive deal. $85 million over $85 million over four years, virtually all of it guaranteed. They don't care. They're in it to win it. Guys, what's going on? A few more people trickled in here. Chris Brown, what's up, brother? Steve Carey, Sean Walsh. What is going on, everybody? Listen, I am, I got to admit, when you see these contracts, it does take you by surprise. You're thinking to yourself, you don't even know if football is going to be here. I'm not sure how we have a bubble in Orlando and basketball players are hesitant to play in a bubble. You have a bubble in the NHL, two cities north of the border, isolated, they're going to get going, but they're hesitant to get going. Baseball's got a pool of players off to the side ready for Corona, and we're hesitant to get going. But the NFL expects to have guys walk on the field who drool on each other at the bottom of a pile 
They clawed each other's eyes. They they not intentionally spit, but they're talking. They're all up in each other's faces in the trenches. They call it in the trenches for a reason. I can't even go into the supermarket. Yet these guys are going to be all up in each other's grills. Come on, man. Hit them with that Stephen A. Come on, man. You got to be kidding me, bro. How does any of this make sense? This doesn't make any sense. Now, listen, everyone knows in here, I'm going to say it. I did not go to Harvard. I did not go to Yale, right? I don't think I needed to in order to understand that unless you're walking in there looking like a freaking astronaut, I don't know how you're expecting this season to go on in football. But that brings me to my next point. The NFL Players Association has already started working on a contingency plan for players who want to opt out. Already working on stipends for players who just show up. Working on if a player deems that his family is at a higher risk, he can still get paid with no bonuses, but get paid to show up and play. Now, here's the thing. I like to, I like to, to, I really like to correlate everything to real life. I like to sort of parlay these things into what we have going on in our everyday world, right? So if I stay home, I don't get paid. Terry Muller and I had a very long conversation, players and owners, right? We talked about this. When Terry called in, we, we, we sort of went at it. He was on the side of the players. I was on the side of the owner. But here's the thing. We don't get paid. We don't get paid because we're not doing work. We don't do work. What's, what money's coming in? What income's coming in? So now, here, here it is. State-of-the-art testing for the four major sports. They have their own laboratories. State-of-the-art testing. The ability to stay closed in without seeing anybody and make your millions. Or give the option to not play. But should they get paid? I don't think so, man. Listen, it, there's, there's, there's no way you can tell me. Now, the NFL is in, in a u- unique position. They have major, major, major radio, station, network, sponsorships, and money. Major. I'm talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, some billions. So, could you parlay that into paying for a little bit? Okay, maybe, but there, there's, a, there's a huge problem here. What happens when that money, you were supposed to supplement some of that money with concessions, and they start to tap into that network money quicker, faster? What happens when it starts to drain quicker? Do only the big stars get paid? I don't know. I don't I don't really know what happens. Um this is a tough one, man. There's a lot here. Jerry Jones paid for that two billion dollar stadium. Jerry Jones paid for that two billion dollar stadium out of his own pocket. But some guys remember, some guys are state approved. They're not privately funded, they're publicly funded. So what happens then? This is a slippery slope, but it doesn't matter what type of slippery slope we're on because in the NFL, there's guys hitting dudes with helmets in the head and they get a $125 million contract. Congrats, Miles Garrett. You smashed a guy over the dome with your helmet and now you, my friend, got a payday. A deal that could be worth up to $144 million over seven years. Good for you, bro. I'm all about people getting paid no matter what. It would make Garrett the highest paid non-quarterback in the NFL. Does anybody even remember when he hit somebody over the head with a helmet last year? Do we care? Anybody remember what happened there? 
Nah, that's cool. <clears throat> We're going to pick and choose who the bad guys are. Later debate. So here we are now, NFL, two months away. We're talking about possibly no spring training. You know what this is going to lead into, guys and girls. Injuries, massive injuries, ACLs, soft tissue. We're talking about hamstrings. We're talking about meniscus. We're talking about ankle sprains. Shoulder tears. This is not this is not going to be a pretty season. I don't even think it happens. <clears throat> I really don't. Honestly, I, I, I think to myself that we're not going to have football. I don't think that baseball finishes. I think that hockey plays and finishes. And I do think I do think that basketball starts and finishes. And even though it's a contact even though it is a, it's a considered a medium contact, a medium risk contact sport, the fact that ESPN had the the 150 million dollars and the wherewithal to build a bubble I think helps tremendously. You got guys like uh, 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 Nicola, um, you know, on the on uh, the Denver Nuggets right now. Before coming back in, he had to quarantine. He was in his home country. He got the virus. He's quarantined now. He comes in for two weeks. Now he's free of it. If you saw the reporter, um, there was a reporter last night. She was reporting something. She had gloves on. Uh, they're in the bubble. They get tested every single day. When you have the means, you can do it. I think basketball is going to end up doing this. And I think that they can finish it. I don't see those other sports. I can't see football starting. There's no way. It doesn't make any sense to me. <clears throat> but it's cool, though. Because we're going we're gonna to talk about it here. Patrick Mahomes. I'm hearing a lot of rumblings now. Half a billion dollars. Half a billion dollars, is he worth it? Let me tell you something. If there's, an, if there's a player in the NFL that's worth it, it's Patrick Mahomes. The NFL, I said it last week, the NFL every single year increases revenue 13%. This year's an outlier, right? And maybe next year because if people don't continue to go back to work, they may not have the means to go to games. But... The fact is, is every year, the NFL increases 13% on salary cap. Do the math. Salary cap's over $200 million. What is 13% of that? Right? So the fact is, is you're increasing revenue another $10 million the following year? Of course, Patrick Mahomes is worth that deal. In five years from now, in five years from now, Patrick Mahomes will be underpaid. Do the math on this one, guys and girls. Here it is. NFL has eight, eight home games a year. If the Chiefs increase their ticket price per seat $10, okay? 10 bucks. That's it per seat. They have 72,000 seats in that stadium, 72, 74. I have to look up the exact, but it's right there, okay? Over the span of Patrick Mahomes' contract of 10 years, the Chiefs will have generated $60 million based on $10 seat price increases. $60 million on $10. Now I ask you, if you're already covering it on a $10 year-by-year -year increase, what else are they going to increase? They're going to make your beer another dollar or 50 cents? They're going to make your hot dog? What's another 50 cents? A hot dog is already $100. What the hell's the difference if it's $100 and 50 cents? The fact of the matter is, is they're going to pay for Patrick Mahomes' contract within the first five years. They're going to renegotiate it, and he's going to be underpaid again. Russell Wilson should get the same money. Lamar Jackson will get similar money. He's close. 
These guys will get this money. They deserve this money. And they'll be underpaid. Because the revenue they bring in, the revenue they bring in is well worth it. And that's just the facts in sports. What can you do? What do you bring in to make it worth it? What do you do to make it worth it? Patrick Mahomes is a stud. Patrick Mahomes, not only does Patrick Mahomes win games by himself, Patrick Mahomes makes everybody around him better. Guys and girls, like the MasterCard commercial, that's priceless. Okay? That's invaluable. Sean Walsh brings up a couple great questions. Um, he says here, obviously, uh, you know, some star athletes, understandably, they, they you know, uh, they're not working, whatever the case, the case may be. He says, like you're saying, if money isn't coming in besides endorsements, clothing sales, like you said, concessions, um, but if you don't play, you shouldn't get paid. It's insane. Sean, I'm 100% with you. His other question here is, um, for the owner of sports, uh, do you now put in a stipulation for a pandemic such as this to try and cut the losses? By the way, Sean, that is something they put in place, bud. That is. In baseball, in baseball, they have specifically put in place cases where, uh, like in baseball, the owners... The owners were able to choose how many games and the owners were able to choose at what price the players played. As it should be. The owners paid for the stadium. The owners paid for the team. The owners paid for the stipulations. That's how I feel about it. <clears throat> I cannot walk into my boss's office and demand more money. I can always show my, my work and what I think my worth is and ask for a raise but he's paying me out of his pocket, period. The extra endorsements, this is because you were given a platform, period. Let's not get this twisted. Breaking news, Derrick Henry just got paid. <clears throat> 50 mil, four years to Henry. I like it, man. Listen, uh, the shelf life for a running back is three and a half years. I'm very, very happy Derrick Henry got paid. He's a big back. Dude, did anyone see the Madden? Did anyone see the Madden ratings that came out? Oh, my God, dude. We got to get some people drug tested here. Let me see this. Madden rankings. Oh, man, dude, you got to see. This is some craziness. I'm looking at this. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to go down the list because this, this just has to do with football players in general. The second best running back in football, according to Madden's rankings. According to Madden's rankings, the second best running back in the NFL is Derrick Henry. Dude, they have Zeke, Nick Chubb, Cook, and Barkley under Derrick Henry. I would like to know, I would like to know, what drugs that person's on. I'd like to know if they're very cheap because whatever they're on, they were ha clearly having a good time. And I think they should be supplying this to all of us because it's unfair that they can be the only ones having fun because this is nutty, bro. I'm looking at this. Christian McCaffrey, Patrick Mahomes, they did running backs. They did quarterbacks. 99s overall. I get it. Christian McCaffrey, in my opinion, best running back in football. You can argue all day. The fact is Christian McCaffrey led his team in receptions, led his team in receiving yards, led his team in rushing yards. I don't care who you are, what you believe in. You are an idiot if you think any different. Alvin Kamara was number 10 on the running back list. Oh, my God. Bro, Nick Chubb's better than Alvin Kamara? Nick Chubb is better then Saquon Barkley? You're telling me Nick... Ch I have to say this again, because maybe it's me. Hold on a second. Let me turn the screen off. Let me turn it back on. Yup, Nick Chubb is still higher than Saquon Barkley. Wow. 
Okay, then. It is... It is crazy. It is crazy. And Sean Walsh, you're 100% right. Endorsements are not a guarantee. Uh, If you mess up the tiniest bit, they can pull it whenever they want. The fact is, though, you do have to understand, Sean, Tom Brady always asked for less, but he always made over $100 million in endorsements every year. And yes, we're talking Tom Brady, but I'm just giving an example. A player doesn't have to sign a lucrative deal because endorsements can carry him through. And there has been multiple multiple players, like Dak Prescott was said to have made upwards of $80 million based on endorsements. There's no reason to sign lucrative deals. Your, your franchise tag gives you $34.5 million. If you make $80 million on the side, you may not be as likely. The fact is, though, is players got to understand You're here to maximize your dollars at the time of. You, when you exit stage left and your career is done, you're out. There is nothing else for you other than signings, other than uh, you doing commercials, other than you endorsing businesses, and coaching if you have that opportunity. So I get it. Get paid when you're there. Get the endorsements. Get this. Get that. And they're not guaranteed, Sean, you're right. But that is a huge revenue stream. Hence the reason why NBA players, shoe deals are are paramount for them. They're critical. When these players get shoe deals, they're like $250 million. It's a big, big deal. And it makes up a lot. So yeah, it can get pulled at any moment in time. But... You have to at least get get your, your foot in the door for them. And a lot of these NFL players, man, you know, Campbell Soup, whatever it may be, these guys, uh, Aaron Rodgers, the State Farm commercials, the, the uh, discount double check, a lot of these guys get these lucrative deals. And their contract, as nice as it is, they just want guaranteed money. And even guaranteed money, depending on what you do, can be re- rescinded. So everyone has to understand that you got to get your money at the time of and keep it moving. But I'm looking down this list. This is really, uh, this is, dude. They have Deshaun Watson. They have Deshaun Watson 18th over, is that 18th overall down this list? Deshaun Watson, the quarterbacks above him are Matt Ryan, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Lamar Jackson, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes. Dude, in my opinion, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, Deshaun Watson is a top five quarterback right now. Deshaun Watson is that that guy. If you look at that Texans team, Bill O'Brien is a certifiable nut job. I don't know anybody else that has more scrutiny around him than Bill O'Brien and still has a job. He traded away DeAndre Hopkins. He took on a dead contract, David Johnson. He traded picks away. He got Laramie Tunsil. And and like for all intents and purposes, like Laramie Tunsil is not Larry Allen. He's not Jonathan Ogden. All right? Like, guys... There are much more viable options out there for linemen. I don't know what Bill O'Brien is doing. He keeps preaching, uh, you know, team unity, structure, whatever the case may be. Guys, there is not many people who do more with less than Deshaun Watson. Period. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady are the epitome of guys who do everything with nothing. But Deshaun Watson is right there. Will Fuller literally cannot stay on the field. Injury prone, suspended. The guys only had DeAndre Hopkins. And he has made the best of it. His line is never ranked better than 10th. Everyone needs to wake up. It's crazy right now what I'm looking at with these rankings. Russell Wilson, I would give a kidney, two toes. I can't think of anything else I'd give up, but a lot. Appendix, I give up a lot to have Russell Wilson. 
But I mean, come on, dude. This uh, this list is a whoever puts this list together is a, is a joke. I mean, I, I'm so I just looked down the list one time when I don't see Saquon Barkley and Zeke on a list, but I see Derrick Henry. It makes me just want to go postal. It's crazy. I am. I, I'm like. It's uh, it, it's it's maddening. But I digress with Madden. I had to point it out because I was thinking of rankings. I was thinking of QBs, and it drives me berserk. It drives me up the walls. <clears throat> so back to where we were with the big contracts. I'm wondering now if all of all this money, these big contracts. I'm wondering if these players are getting are are asking for these big contracts right now because they don't think there's going to be a season and they know the salary cap will take a hit the next year and they want to get their money in prior to. So I am I am definitely wondering what happens from here on out. I'm 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 hoping the NFL takes the right stance on this. I'm hoping that the players are not able to get their millions of dollars without revenue coming in because it's only going to hurt the people at the end of the day. We're going to have to pay more for tickets the following year just to go to just to go to a game. So, I hope it doesn't happen. I read an article saying that the that the Chiefs the Chiefs were all in. They were going to chase Tom Brady. The Chiefs were all in. They were chasing the Patriots. They were going to try and get six Super Bowl rings. Does Patrick Mahomes ever get six rings? Can the Patriot? Can the, the Chiefs be the new Patriots? Is it possible? Oh yeah, yeah. I don't think so, man. Uh, I think you saw. I, I think you saw a time and an age where it was the perfect storm, right? Tom Brady came in. Uh, Drew Bledsoe had that had that rib fracture. Mo Lewis knocked him out of the game. And he comes in, and he sort of makes a name for himself, just making plays when he has to, becoming a leader, not really saying very much off the field. You don't really know him. <clears throat> and... I am thinking, I'm thinking he can't. I'm thinking they it, it, it they can't do it because Brady took less. Because he's had a supermodel wife who made more. And not all of us are fortunate. I mean, listen, some of us have supermodel wives, you know. My wife's not a supermodel, but you are beautiful, babe. Throwing that out there. That's going to get me some brownie points. Thank you, guys. L- learn, listen and learn, boys. But I'm saying that no one no one has that. No one has that ability where their significant other makes that much money. Bill Belichick always traded for assets, traded players before. Richard Seymour got first round picks. Trained Chandler Jones got first round picks. He always trade trades guys before uh before that they expire, so to speak, and gets things back for him. He always puts no name guys into position to be successful. And Buck DeSantis, you're right, bud. You're 100% right. Buck says the way Andy redrafts, the Chiefs are run great from top to bottom. They have a great scouting crew. They have a great player development crew. They're good, man. I agree with you, brother. But here's the thing. Right now, they've surrounded Patrick Mahomes with weapons upon weapons. His wide receiving core, Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins, McCall Hardman, right? He's got guys for days. Travis Kelsey, a nice line, a running a, a running back core, couple backs that can do it at any moment in time. So the question is, when it's time to pay some of these guys, what happens, man? Do you trade them for assets? Are the Chiefs willing to do that? They have a lot of these guys even before their prime. Tyreek Hill is young, bro. The Cheetah is young. McCall Hardman's on his rookie deal, but how long before he wants? Travis Kelsey. Guys, <clears throat> this could spell trouble coming up in the next few years. And here's another thing. What happens to the defense? 
Remember, this year they gave up a lot of points. A lot. They're going to continue to give up points. Can the offense withstand the lack that they get from the defense? I don't know, boys. I don't know. I really don't. I want, I'm a Cowboys fan. I watched year after year after year. <clears throat> Tony Romo put up big numbers. But the Cowboys team could never push through because they never had a defense ranked better than 15th. At some point in time, it has to, it has to be a factor in, in your decision. Defense wins championships. Look at the history. Peyton Manning's epic year where he threw for over 55 touchdowns. What he threw? 55, I think, that year. When they made it to the Super Bowl, who stomped the mud hole in them? The Legion of Boom, Seattle Seahawks. When you had a when you have these defenses, man, there's nothing you can do. Last year, the Rams, if you remember. Not this, obviously not this past year, but last year when the Patriots won the Super Bowl, they held that high octane Rams offense. High octane, guys. Cup, Woods. Goff was on his game. Two tight ends. Gurley. They held them to six points. I'm just saying, guys. Defenses win. Championships. Whatever you want to say about it. The Steel Curtain D in the 70s. San Fran, even though they had West Coast offense, right? But look at it. The 85 Bears, epic D. The 86 Giants, epic D. The 90s Cowboys, epic D. We remember the offense, but the D was disgusting. Keep that in mind. We don't see many. Guys, look at the stat. In the early 2000s, when Tom Brady won his first Super Bowl, he didn't throw one touchdown in that that, that playoff run. He didn't throw any touchdowns. The defense won won, won them games. Obviously, the running back scored a couple times, whatever. All low games. A field goal difference in that, that Super Bowl. They finally started getting going in the Super Bowl when he when he when he threw and was productive, but that playoff run, he was atrocious. Defense wins championships. So I don't know how long this the Patrick Mahomes, this high octane Chiefs team, can carry this through for. I don't. And I'm not a believer in it because the salary cap era, it takes a toll on every team. They rebuild, and depending on who's rebuilding, and depending on who's ahead of this and, and who's in charge of it. Dictates where this ship goes. And I'm not confident that any team could replicate what the Patriots model was because players want to get paid or they want to get traded. And that is the world we live in. Pay me now. Show me my money right now. And I don't blame them. I'm not blaming them at all. But I'm just saying that the fact is in a salary cap era, when the quarterback's taking up 20% of your salary cap, and I'm not saying they shouldn't, how can you pay the rest? We couldn't re- we couldn't get Byron Jones back. One of the best cornerbacks in all football. Signed with the, the Dolphins. We had to decide. <clears throat> we had to decide. Is... Are we going to pay DeMarcus Lawrence? Are we going to pay Jalen Smith? Are we going to pay Leighton Van Der Esch because Sean Lee is coming is coming to the end, the tail end? Who are we going to pay? The fact is, is we haven't even paid our quarterback yet. What happens then, boys and girls? I'm telling you, it's a slippery slope. We're not going to see it again. Not going to happen. But hopefully we see football this year. Hopefully the salary cap stays as is. I don't know what they're going to do. But you know what? It's not my problem. Um, Obviously, 
the Philadelphia Eagles uh, uh, news update. The Philadelphia Eagles have made the statement. There are no fans in the stands this year for the Eagles or the Phillies. Sorry, Philadelphia. No battery throwing for you. Good luck winning home games. Good luck when people aren't screaming at the top of their lungs, harassing people. Sorry, Philly. Keep the trash off the field. By the way, they should institute this all the time for all Philly sports. No fans in the stands. Only fans of the opposite team. So we can enjoy our teams playing instead of getting harassed. Little story for you guys. This this is a good one. So I go to an Eagles game. And obviously I'm a Cowboys fan, so I'm wearing a Cowboys hoodie. And I'm amongst the I'm amongst all the Philadelphia fans. I knew I was gonna get harassed. A guy is walking by and he screams at me. But we're just cooking. Okay, we're grilling. And he screams at me, go F yourself. I was literally actually standing eating a pierogi, okay? So I turned around and I smiled. Cowboys suck. I'm like, yeah, I know. Thanks, man. And the guy who I was with took a machete out of his car. Now, obviously, he's joking, but takes a machete out of his car. You want me to kill this guy? And in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, like, there's probably some people... That probably would just do that because they're from Philly. That's what happens. Philly fans are nuts, man. You guys are out of your mind. You make it unenjoyable to watch any sporting event in your city, and it's very, very trashy. So I'm very happy that the mayor came out and said there is no there is no fans allowed in Philly. The mayor selfishly probably did that for themselves, so there was no arrests. There was no there was no chaos in that stadium and people throwing things at Santa Claus. So good for you, Mayor of Philadelphia. You have my vote again, even though I'm not from Philly. But you have my vote. Keep the Philly fans out of the stadium. Thank you, Mayor. You did us all a service. This year, uh, Anthony says, a little MSR Fantasy Football League. Uh, Dude, it's too much chaos, Ant. It's too much chaos. It's a lot of it's a lot of work, man. Too much work, you know. By the way, what's what sort of fantasy players are we gonna have? There's no league. Who are we drafting? We're not drafting anybody. It's not even gonna be a league. It's no football. Ignore football. Sorry, bud. But <clears throat> football for me. That's it. We're, we're gonna we're gonna move on from this. I wanna I wanna I wanna talk about the New York Metropolitans. I wanna go to baseball. I wanna go to baseball because. Right now, we are talking about we are talking about a time when there is owners there are there are people that own teams that can't even afford teams. And I'm gonna talk I'm gonna talk right directly at the New York Mets owners. In a time when everything has to be on the up and up, you have to be able to pay, pay your players. So everyone knows the way it works is uh, you have to have your money. You have to have your, your, the finances in escrow in order to afford to pay players. I don't know if many know that, but the reason why the Raiders lost Khalil Mack was because they didn't have enough liquid cash to put into escrow to pay his contract. So they had to trade him. John Gruden actually didn't want to trade him. They had to trade him. So many people thought the Raiders were crazy. They're not. There is, there is, there's nothing they could do. So at a time now in sports when you're supposed to be able to pay your players, you're paying them hundreds of millions of dollars. If anybody notices the Mets, the Mets have recently been either letting people go or can't sign big names because we can't afford them. The New York Mets owners are $200 million in debt. $200 million in debt. They were offered $2.2 billion for 80% ownership stake. 
for the first five years and turned it down because of greed. So my question is, at what point, at what point does Rob Manfred step in and say, you must sell this team because you cannot continue to finance this operation. So here we are now. Stephen Cohen, billionaire, hedge fund billionaire Stephen Cohen, offered $2.2 billion. They turned it down. And now he offers top bid $2 billion. Owns a, a minority portion of the Mets. But now we see a new group. Brian Erlacher, Travis Kelsey, DeMarco Murray, J-Lo, A-Rod, offered $300 million of their own money, including other investors, to take ownership. Does baseball have to force their hand? Does baseball have to step in at some point and say, you must sell? If you can't, if you can't feasibly own a team and pay for the financial obligations you have or clear your own financial debt, how can you own a team? I mean, guys, if you can't make your car payment, what happens? Your car gets taken. So I'm not really understanding where the disconnect here is, but the Wilpons have been notoriously known for not wanting to spend money and nickel and diming everywhere they can. And the organization, are the, the, they're the only ones, us the fans are the only ones that face those, those consequences. We lost out on Girardi because they didn't want to pay, they didn't want to overpay for a coach, for a, a manager, a skipper. Girardi, by himself, will add eight wins to your team, being, being a, a manager. Easily. Easily. The Phillies got an amazing coach. And good for them. Good for them. And here's where the ownership is. You have the sign-stealing scandal going on. It's well known who was reported who was involved in it. Well known. They end up signing Beltron. I like the signing, but not if he's involved in a scandal and you have to get rid of him. So why not go all out and get the most reputable manager you can? Because you don't want to pay money. So you sign a guy. You have to lose him. You end up hiring your minor league manager. Completely different than what your uh, original plan was. Deviated right from the plan. It's a joke. It's a joke to me. And as, as a fan, as somebody who pays the money that I do, it's disgusting. You might as well let me run the team. Because honestly, it, it, is, it is complete malconduct on their part. If you cannot afford your team, you must be forced to sell. I don't want to hear it. I don't. At some point in time, there's going to be a player up, and you should be able to sign him. When there's no contract obligations, there's no contract restrictions, there's no salary cap restrictions, you can't pay a player? You don't want to pay a player? I don't understand. So let me get this straight. You trade your farm system away. You bring a farm system up, you can't win a championship. Because you have a, sh- you have a sheep for a manager who won't make the right decisions at the right time, and he was just a face. Then you don't handle the talent correctly, a la Matt Harvey. You don't win championships, and then you trade prospects for players because you think you can win, and you do nothing with them. So your farm system's depleted, you have no pro, you, there's no prospects coming up. You have no key veterans to put in the middle of your lineup to help out anywhere. You have hurt pitchers. 
you have no bullpen. And you can't afford to pay players. Okay, I got it. You know what? This sounds like great ownership. This sounds like great ownership. Let's keep them in there. Let's keep them going. Guys, there's got to be something. There's got to be more to this. There's got to be. I'm hearing stories maybe like Rob Manfred was was a, a, a was like a, a big believer in the Will Ponds or you know liked them whatever I don't know dude I don't know if this is personal I don't know what I do know is is it's a travesty so at some point there's got to be some there's got to be some sort of rules and regulations we got to follow period. You can't have a team in the same division handing out contracts like they're just popping Skittles in their mouth. And another team that's in New York, supposed to be one of the biggest markets, that's not making any moves. It just, it, it's just, it's mind-boggling to me. So there's got to be some regulating. But I'll tell you what, though. As a, as a Met fan myself, I am... All in on Alex Rodriguez. I'm all in on it. I am all in. I am all in on A-Rod buying the team. I'm all in on A-Rod managing the day-to-day operations. A-Rod must be one of the greatest minds ever in the history of the sport. I'm all in on it. So if there's a way to get A-Rod in there, let's do it. It's got to be done now. It's got to be done right now. So someone's got to fix it. Please. Rob Manfred's got to step in. He's got to force his hand. We got to do something. Because we're in trouble. We are in trouble. If we cannot find a way... To get this team better ownership. And there's a lot of teams like that, man. The Pittsburgh Pirates got to have better ownership. Pittsburgh's got to have a good baseball team. That's how I feel about it, man. I, I don't know why. Like It's like the Cardinals. There's history. The Cardinals are very well run, very well managed. Got to have a good team. The Yankees, great ownership, very well run. Got to have a good team. Dodgers, got to have a good team. It just helps. It helps the markets. It helps the sports, the sport in general. It's got to have a good team. And how about what I said on the last show? I didn't really dive into it because James and I had a lot more to talk about. <clears throat> but what do we think about, what do we think about Mike Trout potentially not playing baseball? How do you feel about that? How do you feel potentially the best player in the entire sport saying that he may not play? That is a tough one, man. Uh, is it is it a real sport? Is it is it truly is it truthfully the 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 game you want to watch? Is it if you take out Mike Trout, if you take out the best player? Is it worth it? I mean, I don't really care who you're a fan of. Is it worth it? Right? Is it worth it if in the 90s we took out Ken Griffey? I mean, the numbers would say no. Because Major League Baseball had their strike in 94. And without McGuire and Sosa with the home run face-off with the steroid era, there was no baseball. It was a dying sport. You need those guys. <clears throat> you need them. Jeff Frederick says it well also. Orioles need new ownership as well. Jeff, you hit the nail on the head, man. They do. Orioles need new ownership. You're right, buddy. There's some, there's some teams that, that, that we know in the past were, were teams with a lot of history to it. And the Orioles are one of them. They've had so many amazing names come through that that franchise. They need 
new ownership, and they need it quick. There are some teams that need it. <clears throat> and, Buck, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. Um, I understand there's a baby coming in August. I hear you, brother. I do. I do. And I know he said that. But here's the thing. They're keeping the players. They're talking about having players in bubbles, right? In two cities, playing all their games. They're talking about them traveling by bus, or they're talking about the team staying with themselves, traveling by planes, charter planes, whatever the case may be. I got to be honest with you, Buck. There's no way that that you can't tell me that teams with millions and millions of dollars and the resources they have can't keep these players safe. Come on, bud. I, I think you would agree with that. So it's a, it's a different it's a different day right now. The resources are endless. The owners can 100 percent keep their players safe and healthy if they wanted to, right? The players were talking about the people they were worried about were the other players not caring, leaving the bubble, going to get their fix of, you know, girls or alcohol or whatever they want. That's actually the biggest threat to the players. It was other players, you know? So can the Angels keep Mike Trout safe? Yeah. And then when Mike Trout goes to the hospital to be with his his child, God willing, a healthy, a healthy baby, then he quarantines for two weeks and comes back. I mean, this is standard protocol, Buck. You got, I mean, for all of us, right? This is standard protocol. Um, that's what I, you know, I, I just feel personally we're making a big deal. We're making a bigger deal out of this. Um, and we're not really talking about the real, the real issues with the sports in general. You can't have sports with their new agreement. They, they should have forced the players to sign a contract saying they all had to, they all had to play. And I don't want to be the guy who tells you you have to do something or you can't or you shouldn't, whatever. But the fact is, is you can't have mainstream big market guys not playing. Can't do it. Mike Trout is the biggest name. He has the he holds the biggest contract in all of baseball. $430 million. It cripples the Angels. Cripples them. You cannot do it. You take the biggest star away from any team, it's done. It's a wrap. Think about Garrett Cole not pitching for the Yankees and signing a $325 million contract. The Yankees were the Yankees were a pitcher away, in my opinion. A big-name pitcher away from winning the World Series this past year. How can you how can you justify Garrett Cole not being there? It doesn't make any sense. This is this to me it screams dysfunction. That's what it screams to me. It screams dysfunction. Buck, you got to be a Phillies fan. I'm assuming you're a Philadelphia guy, you got to be a Phillies fan. Bro, you're telling me you feel good if Bryce Harper's not there? There's no way. There's no way. You got to be all in or you got to be out. That's how I feel. But nobody wants to make these decisions. Everybody, everybody, every single person lives in this gray area of BS. And this is why I hate it. We sit around as fans. I I like to talk as a fan, right? Most of you guys know me as a fan of sports in general. So I'm going to talk as a fan. There's no way I watch TV and I watch these guys argue over millions of dollars. And like, this is what we're talking about, right? The country is trying to implement a minimum wage of $15 an hour. And these athletes and owners are arguing over millions, right? Like, come on, bro. That's number one. Number two, you put a system in place where at the end of all your bitching and complaining, 
I still may not see my favorite player play. So I waited months for baseball to come back on. And let me tell you guys something. I love me some baseball, dude. I love it. You're telling me after waiting months and seeing the lobbying back and forth and all the smoke and mirrors that I may not see my favorite athlete? That's crazy. What did I wait for? I waited for you just to kick me right in the in the the the, the jewels. That's what I waited for. I am reviewing the file on your 2014 Mazda 6. Oh, hello, hi. This is uh, oh. Hamilton Radio with My Sports Radio. Who's calling in? I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Whoa. Look, live on the air here, I'm hearing the Wizard of oh. Oz with a with a with a car insurance spam call on a radio show. Yeah, are we sorry safe? about that. <laughs> are we are we safe anywhere? Anywhere? Like, yeah. No, no. Like, are we really safe anywhere? I mean, I get spam calls all day long. Are we? <laughs> we're not even safe on the radio. On the radio now, John. Oh Look my God! This is I cannot believe this crap. We're not safe anywhere. I mean, unreal, right? Ruben, this we're we're this we are this is a mess. This country's a mess. I'm on the radio. I literally there's a spam insurance call. I can't even I can't even do a radio show without the insurance comp without a fake insurance company wanting me to get car insurance. Oh my gosh. This is dude, this is real life. Guys and girls, this is real life, man. Every number that comes through my phone now, every number is a spam call. It's a radio show. There's a number. It's a spam call. In freaking credible. I, man, oh man, I'll tell you, dude. It is, <whistles> this is bad news bears. He got, he, I, I mean, listen, I know for a fact. Mark Zuckerberg set that up. I know it. I know it because me and Mark, we don't see eye to eye. Right now, Mark's going to shut me down. He's going to shut this simulcast down right now because I said his name live. I know he set that up. I'm telling Mark. Mark, I'm telling you. You and I, my friend, we, are, we do not see eye to eye, brother. This is bad news. I'm telling you he's going to shut me down. Get ready to put this simulcast back up. Because every time I mention this guy's name, they shut me down. Mark Zuckerberg. I can't, dude. That's a good one, though, Jeff. Because Jeff knows the, uh, the hardships. The back and forth I go. We do, uh, we do have quite the battle, him and I. It's, it's, uh, it'll only lead to a cage fight sooner or later. With very high ratings. A lot of money. Um, it's going to be good. But... Buck said, yeah, he's a baseball guy. Uh, he'd be mad if Bryce Harper didn't play, but he'll be real mad if they don't sign JT. JT's the best catcher in football, bro, hands down. Buck, hands down, JT, best catcher in football. Your team is pretty stacked, dude. The Phillies are a nice team, brother. I don't like to admit that. I'm a Mets fan, but got to keep it real. Got to keep it 100, right? The Phillies are a nice team, bro. They are. I, uh, I, I can always appreciate a good team when, when I see it. The Braves are a good team. Our division is, dude, our division is tough, brother. It really is because the Mets got a pretty nice team. The Nationals, the Nationals, do I even have to, I mean, they're World Series champions, right? So your World Series champions, the Marlins have a lot of prospects coming up. Uh, it's, it's. It's crazy. Um, I I don't know how this division, but I could see it having another World Series champion coming out of there. The Yankees are the prohibitive favorites. The Dodgers also uh, coming out of the NL West. But I don't know, man. I know uh, when Terry was here with me, he read off some of the um, he read off some of the, some of the odds. But I gotta say, um, I gotta say that. Any of these teams in, in a 60-game sprint, because that's what it is. It's going to be a sprint to the finish. 
I got a big time feeling that we can definitely get us a World Series champion um, out of the NL out of the NL East. So, my next question to everybody here is this: I was going down. I was I was looking through uh, over time some of the some of the greatest players for the Mets. I was looking at some of the greatest players for the Yankees. Um, and I, I started, I questioned myself. If I had to start a franchise, if I had to start a franchise baseball team right now, and I could have any player in the history of the game, who would I have? So my question is this. By the way, if anybody wants to share this segment with me, because this is a good segment. If anybody wants to share this, 609-807-2492. Call in. I want to know people's opinions. If you can have one player in baseball ever in the history of baseball, would you go pitcher? Would you go hitter? Which position, which player would you go and it got me thinking a lot. A lot. I said to myself, pitching is 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 pivotal, right? It's, it's vital. Hitting is also key. But could you play more of a of a metrics game, a saber metrics game with hitting like the A's do and build a team? And it got me thinking. And I want to know everyone's opinion on this. The player that I would choose to start a team with would actually be Nolan Ryan. I don't know if that will surprise anybody. Nolan Ryan, the most no-hitters in the history of MLB. Nolan Ryan was, I mean, this guy was forever. Seven no-hitters, 5,700 strikeouts, 324 wins. And it's crazy because the second person, Andrew Brom, that was the second person, I thought also Barry Bonds. Ken Griffey's my favorite, but I thought Barry Bonds. And just like Andrew said, I've never seen a guy get walked to load the bases with no outs or one out, knowing that there was multiple hitters behind him that could do damage. That guy, no matter what, and let's be serious, prior to the HGH, prior to the allegations, he was a 500-500 guy. Please remember that. 500 home runs, 500 steals. So I thought about him too, but Nolan Ryan actually happened to be my pick. I thought to myself, Nolan Ryan, pitching, if you have a starting pitcher, he's a workhorse, okay? Who better would you want in there than a guy who pitches complete games every time he walks up to the plate? Pitches more innings than anybody. Throws the most no-hitters in baseball. Was willing to get down and dirty. There's nobody who I would want on my team. And Andrew Brown, keep this in mind. Nolan Ryan played for 27 seasons. Bro, 27. <clears throat> that is... I mean, that's a crazy career, bro. Tony Gwynn, Brad Evans, that's another great one. Tony Gwynn, man, it was Tony Gwynn, a, a, he, he was a dying breed, right? The late, great Tony Gwynn, man. Wow. You know, I didn't think Tony Gwynn, but I want to pull up his stats right now. Tony Gwynn, one of the greatest pure hitters. Ever. 
ever. Let's see. Look at these averages, guys. In 1994, you remember this? He batted 394. Wow. You remember that, dude? Came close. <clears throat> Came close. Wow. That's that's pretty crazy, man. Tony Gwynn. What stats? 372, 353, 368, 394, 370. <sighs> God. That chewing tobacco, man. Ay, ay, ay. At his his career batting average, guys, 338. Man. Incredible. Pete Rose, the hit king. Ichiro Suzuki. These are, and, and listen, with Ichiro, with Ichiro, you also got fielding too. Remember, Ichiro had an incredible amount of outfield assists. And he had just as many hits as as Pete Rose over the over the entirety of his career between Japan and America. I don't know, man. I don't know. I gotta look up. I want to look up uh, Barry Bonds right now. I want to look up Barry Bonds. Uh, Barry Bonds' career batting average: two ninety eight. Not bad. Almost 300 batting average when you would never see with a power hitter. But look at this, dude. Before, right before his monster year, right, where we saw that that huge increase in numbers. Listen to the consistency of this guy in home runs. 33, 25, 34, 46, 37, 33, 42, 40, 37, 34, 49. And then the jump to 73. The guy had 109... It, Oh my God, dude. 177, 198, 232 walks. The dude had 137 RBIs. He had 73 home runs, 137 RBIs, and 177 walks in a season. Oh my goodness. You imagine how many more home runs he would have hit if he wasn't intentionally walked 177 times in a year? Wow. Dude, that's not even it. In 2004, he was walked 232 times. Dude, he had 617 plate appearances. Every two and a half at bats, he was walked. Oh my God, bro. That is crazy. That's wow. I got to admit, I, I didn't. That's nuts, dude. 664 plate appearances, 73 home runs. The guy batted, dude, his batting average. His batting average was 328 that season. Oh my God. That's wow. 863 slugging. Oh my God. On base plus his his, his OPS, guys, 1.379. That's that's guy was an alien. The guy was an alien. But I like this, man. I thought about it a lot. I sat down. I thought to myself, what would be the player I started with? And Andrew brought up a great point once every five days. I, I did think of that, Andrew. I did. Um, but to me, first of all, he definitely didn't pitch every five days. It was like every four, right? Because guys back then, there wasn't five-man rotations. They didn't even care. Um, you know, they just they just pitched. And there was no pitch limit. Like, they're pitching 140 pitches. It just doesn't matter. But Nolan Ryan, to me, was like, looking at his career, I mean, you, you, you can't get any better. It was perfection. So it was tough to go with. I, I looked around. I thought, do I start with Mike Trout? Do I go with a guy like Mickey Mantle? Um, 
you know, do I do I go with a guy like like Pete Rose with the hits? Do I start out? Um, I don't know. I looked at 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 Mickey at Mickey Mantle's numbers. Phenomenal numbers. Um, I mean, the guy had, had one of the greatest careers ever in a time when slugging and hitting was not even a thing. The guy was hitting 40, 50 home runs a year. Uh, you know, I thought that. And a buddy of mine says to me, he says, what about, and this this may sound crazy, but he said, what about in the peak of his prime, what about a guy like Manny Ramirez? I said, that's a crazy choice. He said, look up his numbers. <clears throat> You know Manny Ramirez had a season when he had 165 RBIs? 165 RBIs. I I literally, I don't even know. And I, I, I didn't know that. I said to myself, 100, 145 RBIs, 165, 122, 125, 130, 144, 121. The guy was like a beacon of consistency when it came to hitting. Batting average, 328, 333, 351, 349, 325. Guy's batting average, his career was 312. You're talking 19-year career, 312. It wasn't a bad choice. It wasn't. Looking at the numbers, it's not. And his walks, I mean, he had he had triple digits. 2006, he had 100 walks. Only 558 plate appearances. 100 walks. That's a lot of walks for not as many plate appearances as you would expect. So, and I and listen, Andrew, you say that. But the year that he had those numbers, Brom, he wasn't on Boston, brother. He was on the Cleveland Indians. So I thought the same thing, dude. But his best years actually weren't even behind that lineup. They were in a, on, in a completely different team. So I, I'm not a hundred percent. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yeah, yeah, Jim Tomey. Uh, I know he played first. I want to say Alomar was still there. I don't know if it was the later part of his career and uh, and. Uh, Omar Vizquel, if I'm not mistaken, please don't quote me. But I'm just saying, those numbers came prior to Boston. So, you know, we got to do that. Do we go Miguel Cabrera? Is first base, is first, I don't know if first base, um, if first base gives me the production that I want, Right to justify taking a guy number one overall with maybe uh, Cabrera. You know, he had the triple crown first thing, first since Yaz, uh, which is obviously we see how often it happens. It's impossible. So I don't know. So many players. It's countless. I I, I definitely want everyone to, to chime in on this, man. Uh, I'm seeing Cobb, another great choice. Um, Ty Cobb, one of the most hated men in the history of the sport, batting average career 366. But here's the thing I challenge you with Pilar. It's a great, it's a, it's great person to do it, but here's the thing. Never hit for power. Okay. Always had a ton of hits and average, but here's the thing. What? What pitchers did he face? What time did he play in? Right? So I also have to take that into account. That's why we don't hear so much of when Babe Ruth, when those Yankees were doing what they were doing, Murder's Row, when we hear those Yankees, I don't really know the pitchers at that time were like we have recently or like we have in the last 30 years, right? So there's not guys, I don't, I don't hear of anybody throwing over a hundred miles an hour. I don't hear of anybody 
throwing as many perfect games, no hitters. Um, so I, I can't really justify it, man. You know, a lot of those guys have a lot of wins because keep in mind, they pitched every four days and there was no closers. So they pitched and that was it. So I, I, I think it's a little skewed. Uh, Ty Cobb's numbers, don't get me wrong, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're revolutionary. I mean, the guy batted over 400 times, batted over 400, two, three times? Two times. 419 he batted in the season. 409. I mean, that's a joke. It's 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 video game numbers, right? We know that. But it's hard, man. It's hard to say in those uh in those days, Warren Spawn. Like it's hard to say, man. I would venture to say we'd probably pick a player in the last 30, 40 years um that we knew and we saw. Ken Griffey. Um, Ken Griffey's got to be there. Got to be. Revolutionized the outfield. Uh, fielding, right? Climbing up the wall. Guy had the sweetest swing in all baseball. Played a premier position center. Um, So, you know, Ken Griffey Jr.'s got to be there. What do you have? 600 and... Ken Griffey, what do you have? 660 home runs. I think, right? Am I am I off on that? Let's see. Ken Griffey Jr. Let's see if we had 630. Batting average a little low, 284, uh, you know, but his fielding made up for it. Had a lot of had a lot of assists. Ton of years with home runs, big RBIs. Wow, that 1997 season must have been something. Ken Griffey had 147 RBIs and Manny Ramirez at 165. What a season to watch baseball. Damn. Okay, not bad. Um, you imagine in 98 when, when McGuire and Sosa are chasing the home run record, Ken Griffey has 56 home runs, 146 RBIs, and and he was fourth in the MVP balloting. You imagine? Wow. Juan, oh my God. Juan Gonzalez, listen to these names. AL MVP. That year, Juan Gonzalez, 45 home runs, 157 RBIs, batted 318. No more, no ma, Garcia Parra, 35, 122, 323, and Derek Jeter, the captain, 1984, 324. His war was a 7.5, highest on the list. Manny Ramirez, 45, 145, 194. He was sixth on the list. How about this name? Mo Vaughn. Mo Vaughn was fifth. Mo Vaughn, man. The names. Incredible. NL MVP, Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, 66 and 70. Could you imagine having a season where you hit 56 home runs, 146 RBIs, and don't even sniff the MVP award? You imagine? That's devastating. I would be like, what do I got to do? Oh, I know what you got to do. You got to be Barry Bonds and take steroids. That's what you got to do, Griffey. You imagine if a guy like Ken Griffey Jr. took steroids or HGH? Sick. I would have I, I would have loved to. I would have paid extra to see it, to be honest with you. I'd have paid extra. Why not? It's crazy. Just to see that 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 next level, man. Nuts. So many names that year, such great baseball. But I got to say, if I had to start a team, I'd go Nolan Ryan. I'll shift over. I'll shift over to football. NFL, all time. Who would you start your football team out with? And this is an interesting debate. Who would you start your football team out with? I want to know. If you had to start a franchise right now, and you could have any player in their prime. Doesn't matter. Any player. Another buddy of mine said Patrick Mahomes. Is Patrick Mahomes worth that right now? Is he the is he essentially the greatest of all time right now? I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure. And I'm not even sure you go Tom Brady. I'm also not sure of that. 
I know he didn't win Super Bowls. I'm not, I know he didn't win Super Bowls, but I got to say, Dan Marino. Can anybody name me outside of the Mark brothers, uh, you know, who he really had as a wide receiver? He never had a running game, ever. Keith Byers, stop. I don't think I don't think you could I just don't think you could say anybody over Andrew Brown says Michael Vick. Oh gosh. Michael Vick. Stop. Come on, bro. Mike Vick was he was a beast, but that guy's that guy's throwing per that guy's completion percentage was was pookies. I don't even want to hear that, bro. Michael Vick. Get out of here. You said fight me. You know what, dude? I mean, you may want to say that, but he he's probably busy fighting dogs. Come on, bro. This guy's completion percentage, think about this, dude. His career police per, uh, completion percentage was 56.2. Ugh. He threw over 3,000 yards twice. Ugh. 21, tw- over 20 touchdowns in one year, at one year. Ugh. Stop. Just stop it. Right now. My gosh. Look at this disaster. I'm looking at this guy's career, and it is awful. Dude, awful. Andrew Brom, you must be a real big Falcons fan, because this is awful. I mean, come on, dude. You got to be better than that. Dan... Look at this. Let me just let let's let, let's let's do this here, bro. Let's do it. By the way, Dan Marino's rookie year was better than any year Michael Vick had. Dan Marino in his second season ever threw for over 5,000 yards and 48 touchdowns and 17 INTs. Bro, in his in his sophomore year when there's normally a sophomore slump, Incredible. Wow. I like some of these, man. Buck says Troy Palomalu, Andrew Brom. Uh, in all reality, he says a, a big name wide a big name wide receiver, Rice Moss, Harrison. I can get I can get down with that. I can get down with that. It's just the issue is do you have a quarterback to get the ball to him? That's all, Brom. You know? That's that's the only sticky part. Do we have a quarterback to get it to him? Because we've seen time and time again. Big weapons, but if there's no quarterback to get the ball to him, you just nothing's going to happen there. Nothing. But Dan Marino, what a career! Wow. I mean, this is this guy. It's a shame he never won a Super Bowl, man. That guy revolutionized the game. Just short of a 60 percent completion rating, and by the way. Drew Brees can't be far behind, boys. Can't be far behind. Four 5,000-yard seasons. Four. Wow. That's nuts. 67.6 career completion rating. Incredible. Touchdowns. Guy's nuts, man. Drew Brees has got to be there. Sorry. Got to be there. Deion Sanders in his prime. Best cornerback ever. I mean, Buck, you said Troy Palomalu. What about Deion Sanders? Do you build around Deion Sanders? Can't be bad, right? Having the best cornerback in 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 all uh in all of you know in all, in the whole game. Deion Sanders was was a stud with the Falcons. He went over, went over to the 49ers, got a chip with them, came to the Cowboys, got a chip with them. Went over to the Ravens in, in the tail end of his career, still did some pretty nice things on that team. 2005, I think. Aaron Rodgers, got to be there. Aaron Rodgers has to be there. Aaron Rodgers does more with less than I've ever seen, also. 
So it's got to be, it's, it, it's, it's, it's got to be somebody that you know really changed the game. I saw Brad Evans say a couple running backs. I can't say running backs, man. I can't. If I had to start a franchise right now, anybody, even though the names you named, uh, Walter Payton, uh, Barry Sanders, dude, come on, some of the gr- greatest names to ever, ever lace them up, ever touch the 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 pigskin. I still, I still can't. I still can't do it. I I, I want to get everyone's opinion real quick. The Redskins, well, the 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 team that is Washington. How does everyone feel about that? They're changing it. Uh, Dan Snyder held his ground for a long time. How does everyone feel about the Redskins changing their name? I'm going to give you my take on it. I don't know if you feel the same way, if you don't. Um, so the there are numerous newspapers that have done polls, Washington Post, New York Times, to name a few of the big ones, right? Those are the ones that we're all familiar with that did polls and actually asked Native Americans if they were offended by the name and they weren't. Some of them said it actually paid homage. My question is, is if if we're changing it for the Native Americans, but they don't want to change, why are we changing it? I'm not really understanding... I'm I'm not really understanding uh, where we get the right to change something for somebody else when they're not mad about it, right? It sounds it seems a bit odd to me. If if all we're doing at this point is just changing things to change them, at what point do we leave them around to sort of teach the history, right? So Dan Snyder did something pretty smart and said he was retiring. He was retiring the name so he could have the history. Even the Redskins alumni, the players, said it will never change the history. You could tell some of them were pretty upset about it. It's, it doesn't make any sense to me. <clears throat> so now I'm hearing this. Now I'm hearing that the Cleveland Indians are under fire. The Atlanta Braves. I don't even know how the word Braves insults anybody. But the Atlanta Braves. I am wondering if the Chiefs follow. The owner for the Blackhawks essentially came out and said, you can kick rocks if you think that we're changing this name. Um, you know, he was just like, listen, sorry, it's not going to happen. Um, there was a thing, uh, so the Blackhawks came out and said they won't change the name because it honors the life of an actual Native American. Um, by the way, good for them. Good for you. Awesome. It's, uh. It is pretty cool to see it. There's no reason to change anything whatsoever. By the way, we sh- everybody, it's, it's, it's crazy to think. It's crazy to think. That was my next point, Don. It's crazy to think that you literally, you think that by changing something, nobody remembers that they were a team or a name. So by the way, the Redskins franchise, which is a very storied franchise, very. And even going back in the turmoil, when you're talking about the, you know, the scabs playing, that was some of the Redskins greatest moments in the history of their franchise. And you want to change the name and listen, the owner, it affected his, his his bottom dollar. That's why. It affected his bottom line. We know that. Sponsors pulling their name, their you know, their their merchandise, Nike, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it's crazy to think that. 
Because sports fans, like everybody in here listening, watching, whatever the case may be, you and I both know. The Redskins are the Redskins, bro. Like, they'll forever be the Redskins. You can call them whatever you want to call them, but they're the Redskins. And unless you think that you're going to, if if they name them, if they name them, let's say, the Red Tails, that pays homage to history of another minority group. So you're just taking history away from one to give it to somebody else. Someone said Red Wolves. What the hell is a Red Wolf? What's a Red Wolf? I don't even know what that is. I mean, are we just making that up? I don't know. But it's it's crazy to think that people can get so mad about a name that actually has nothing offensive on the picture on it. And when you did a poll, asked to 500 people, to 500 Native Americans, and it had a 90% approval rating. Guys, it's 2020. I don't think there's been one topic ever, ever, that has that had a better approval rating than that. When's the last time you heard 90% of people liked anything? Seriously. I don't care what it is. Food, drinks, doesn't matter. 90% approval rating. And we're changing the name? That's odd. Shouldn't we change it if there was only a 10% approval? This is very weird, right? So if somebody goes into a store to buy a TV and the TV got a 90% percent positive reviews, you think that company would then stop selling that TV? Probably not. Probably not. They'll probably make small modifications, but sell the TV that got them really good reviews. So in 2020, we have a 90% approval rating of the people it affects, and we change it. Okay. Interesting. You know what happens next? The Cowboys got to change their name. Well, the Cowboys killed Indians. How can we keep the Cowboys? I mean, I don't I don't know how you could keep the Cowboys. Doesn't make any sense to me. The New York Yankees. You have to change the Yankees. Because if you don't change the Yankees, how do the people in the South feel? You got to change it. You can't be represented by a bunch of Yankees. Got to change it, guys. We got to change them all. We got to change them all. I mean, where does it stop? Where does it, where does it, I, literally, where does it end? Where does it actually end? That's what I want to know, right? I, do we change the Buffalo Bills because Buffalo, Buffalo are sacred, we're considered sacred animals to some? The Patriots? I mean, got to change the Patriots. Those colors, red, white, and blue, got to get rid of them right now. They're out. Where does it end, guys? Come on. It's so silly. It's a team. It's it's fictional. Guys, it's fictional. It actually doesn't. It's not even real. It doesn't make sense. None of it does. Uh, do you have to change the Green Bay Packers? Do we have to change the Green Bay Packers because there's lactose intolerant people in the world? And they're upset because people wear cheese on their heads? Do we make them take their lactose intolerant pills before the game because they wear cheese on their heads and it gives them agita? Come on, man. This is bad. This is bad. I mean, people, we just got to, everyone's got to take a deep breath. 
realistically, there are way worse things going on right now. Way worse. I am not the least, not am I, not am I not only not offended by any names. You can call me any name and I don't care. Why? Because if you're calling me names, you're not even relevant. If you're insulting people, you're not even relevant. Stop complaining. Stop complaining about names. Stop. Stop it. Go to work. Stop with this. Standing outside of stadiums with your little signs. I don't even think native I don't even think native American people protest outside of stadiums to change the red, the, the the Redskins. Let them have their teams. God forbid we give them something. It's incredible. I'm telling you, next thing you'll see it, the Green Bay Packers are out. Every lactose intolerant American is mad right now. They're mad. If I got to look at cheese one more time, I'm out. It's so sad, man. It just ruins sports. The, I mean, bro, just go down these names. It's, uh, you know... The Saints, people who don't believe in Saints should be mad at this name. Real mad. The 49ers, the Gold Rush, a lot of people lost their lives in, in, in those mines. A lot. I'm out on that. Don't want it. Change it. It's just crazy, bro. It's crazy. And can we please get the New York Jets and the and the New York Giants either to change their name to New Jersey or get them the hell out of this state? Because I'm tired of their crap. There's New York teams that aren't even New York teams. Get your crappy teams out of my state. I'm over them. Only thing good about them being in New Jersey is they, they pay the tolls. So I guess they do something good. But other than that, get your crappy teams out of my state. That right there bothers me. It's a crazy, crazy time, man. It's a crazy, crazy time. What what what's what about what about NBA, man? Do we got any names in the NBA? Do we have any names in the NBA that we should change here? The Orlando Magic. Yeah. It is a magic trick. It's like they're not even there. They disappear every year. Incredible. I think they're good. Dude, the Atlanta Braves are gone. See you later. They're Cleveland Indians, gone. See you later. This is such a joke. I can't take it, bro. I'm over them. I really am. But it's cool, though. I can't wait to see what the Cowboys' new name is. They'll probably just be the Dallas Stars. Like in hockey. The Dallas... It'll just be the Dallas Cows. You know? That's it. It'll be like a, a glass of milk on the side of the helmet. A cow on the side of the helmet. It's so sad. I'm sorry we even had to talk about that crap. But hey, man. Listen. Such is life. Guys and girls, 2020. Anybody could do whatever they want. I'm reading here now. Dak Prescott plans to play on his tag. $31.4 million. 12 players are going to play on their franchise tags this year. No deals. We got big names. A.J. Green, Justin Simmons, Yannick Nguko. Uh, Who else we got? Hunter Henry, but we expected that. He's hurt all the time. Leonard Williams, no one cares about him. Anthony Harris from Minnesota. Shaquille Garrett, that's a big name. A lot of names on that list. A lot of potential free agents. <clears throat> if we have football, a lot of potential for next year. We'll see what happens. We'll see what teams sign what. Hopefully the Cowboys can get a few people here. Hopefully a new quarterback. Maybe. I would still trade my whole entire... I would trade him and two first-round picks for Aaron Rodgers right now. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Look at this. Wow. Did you know Dak Dak Prescott's brother's name is Tad? 
like Tadpole. Tad. He tweets, there's a reason why, there's a reason I was never a Dallas Cowboys fan growing up or before they drafted Dak after today. Who knows how much longer I'll be cheering for them. That's cool, Tad. So you're saying you're not a fan of the Dallas Cowboys because we didn't pay your brother. Gotcha. Our feelings are hurt. Somebody pay Dak so we can get another fan. We can get Tad Prescott as a fan. Somebody, please. Anybody pay this man because we care. Oh, God, dude. It's a joke. It's nuts, man. Guys and girls, NBA. We'll get into it right now real quick. NBA is right around the corner. I said it before. I think NBA is one of the few, the few leagues that start and finish. The players said the 29th was a big, big date. The 29th gives them a two-week quarantine. Everybody will officially have been in the bubble and allowed to practice. After they get tested with two weeks in, uh, will they all be able to, will they all be ready to play? Will they all be there? Or will we have cases of the coronavirus? I'm excited. I want to see the NBA back. I do. Um, I want to see sports back in general. Um, I want to see people dunking. I think LeBron James, I think the Lakers are going to win a championship. I hope they do. I think LeBron James is the greatest player of all time, hands down. I think he deserves more credit for what he does. Um, he doesn't get enough of it. So I think I think they start. I think they play. I think they finish. I think the Lakers win. And it is a condensed move. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, I mean, Buck, I agree with you. It's it's that's if we see college. That's if we see college football, right? That's if we see college football. So we gotta hope we see college football. Um, to see the talent, I know we have Lawrence out there, right? But I think everyone's gonna be vying for him. So it'll be a little tough. We'll have to kind of we'll have to mortgage the future away if we want to get him. Not that I'm I'm not that. I'm not cool with it. We can, but we got to make sure it's a solid move on our part if we're going to part ways with it. I really wanted to see the Cowboys part way with Dak before the draft. Trade him to Cincinnati. I think they could have gotten two first-round picks for him. I think Cincinnati would have gotten a guaranteed established quarterback, which they probably would have liked. Um... And I think, honestly, that we really dropped the ball on this one, I think. But we'll see, man. We'll see what happens. Who knows? Could be a couple deals made, um, you know, between teams, trading. Honestly, who knows? So everything everything is, is up in the air. And as we saw today, uh, you know, even with running backs, The Madden ratings let us know that Nick Chubb is better than Saquon Barkley. So we really don't know who's good anymore and who's not because according to whoever's doing the rankings, um, the people that they want is all that matters. The people that they like is all that matters. So good for Madden. I'll be looking forward to some of that chaos. But guys and girls, um, today was fun, man. Today was a good time. Today we ran through... Some people we'd start uh, all time, which I I actually love that segment a lot. Uh, I think starting a franchise, I think maybe one one week what we'll do is we'll go through some of the premier positions and we'll talk about, uh, you know, we'll go through the sports and we'll talk about it in each position. I'll sort of lay some players out, but I I really appreciate everyone's insight on who they would choose for sure. Um, I definitely loved uh, the salary cap. The football segment in general, uh, I think we hit home on a lot of things today, man. It was it was much more, much more upbeat, right, than last week. Uh, we talked about some tough things, but tough things have to be talked about if you want to make a little bit of change, if you want to make a little bit of headway. So I appreciate you guys and girls rocking out with me, taking some time out of your Wednesday, as always, to rock out with your boy John and Tell here on My Sports Radio, guys. 
Download the app for Hamilton Radio if you haven't yet. You can listen to any station, anytime, anywhere in the world, no matter where you are. Um, you can listen on HamiltonRadio.net channel 2. You can watch Simulcast. And I love when my guys are watching Simulcast because I get the really good back and forth with some of you guys. So I appreciate it, Buck. Uh, Brad Evans. I know Anthony, Anthony was with us a little bit earlier. Jason Pallara. Andrew Brom. Awesome conversation earlier today. Uh, Don Long, Terry Muller, uh, the list goes on and on. So guys and girls, thank you, uh, for jumping in, joining in as always, uh, love my guys, love my girls for now. We're out. You'll catch me in six days, 22 hours right here again on Wednesday, my sports radio MSR is out. We'll catch you later. The newest radio show on Hamilton Radio, My Sports Radio. Deals. And Barnes hits one high. It's a game. It is a long time.